Okay, welcome back, everybody. Let me go ahead and add Shruti and Survey to the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and let Shruti introduce our last speaker. Hey, welcome back, everybody. And thank you for sticking around. I know it's been a long day, so I really appreciate and we all really appreciate you being here. So everybody who's here for you. Applause. <laughs> My own audience. <laughs> so I want to introduce <laughs> I want to introduce our last speaker here, Sergey, who's going to be talking about pushing your React and GraphQL testing further. Sergey is a senior software engineer at PayPal, and he's the member of PayPal's web checkout team. Last four years, Sergey spent time building core checkout experiences at PayPal. An interesting fact about Sergey is that he began his career as a video game developer in Ukraine while in college. Sergey says he had no idea that years later he would play a role in one of the most successful payment companies in Silicon Valley in the world. So Sergey is going to be talking about an interesting topic that always arises a lot of questions, and that is testing GraphQL and React together. The floor is yours, Sergey. All right. Um... So hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sergey, and I'm super excited to be talking to you virtually. Um, so I hope you're all healthy and doing well. Uh, and I'm pleased to be talking with you about pushing your uh, React plus GraphQL testing further. Um, so a little bit about myself. I work at PayPal and web checkout team, uh, you know, building new checkout experiences in checkout web platform itself. And by the way, this is my first uh, uh, you know, public talk uh, on the external conference. Um, so, you know, let's go ahead and uh, get into this. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, what we're gonna be uh, covering today. So to begin with, um, you know, I'm very concerned with the topic of uh, an effective application testing. And so um, I will be talking um, about testing React applications which are using GraphQL. Um, so I will um, walk you through, um, you know, uh, a story about checkout testing evolution and our next gen checkout app that many of you probably you know, already used when you choose PayPal at online shops. Um, then I will talk about um, the solution that we came up with as an outcome of this journey. Um, I really hope uh, by sharing you know, our experience, uh, you will be able to improve testing of your you know, own applications. <clears throat> um, so let me give you uh, a little bit of a uh, context. So our checkout app um, is a you know React application uh, you know which uses Apollo as a GraphQL client, uh, and on the server uh, we have um, you know our GraphQL layer as a node app. Uh, you know nothing unusual, right? Um, but the problem you know is that uh, checkout itself is uh, very complicated and involved. Um, there are hundreds of different combinations of interface and user flows depending on the country, user settings, um, you know type of integration, experiments, uh, and so on. Um, so, you know, reproducing these user flows is a challenge. Um, as a result, um, the development of new features or fixing bugs slows down a lot. Um, and many of the flows requires like reading long instructions or, you know, creating user accounts or finding instruments. And at the end, you know, downstreams might be in the good mood to give you the data you need. Um, I mean, developers, of course, are no stranger, you know, to such things. But what about designers or um, you know product managers? How are they supposed to first reproduce all these user flows, and second, keep in the head all the different combinations of the UI? Another example: Let's say um, developer has finished working on a feature or a bug, and the product manager wants to do some verification. It's tempting to say, "Could you please go read the instructions which I can send to you so you can reproduce the flow yourself?" And so pretty much developers end up making screenshots or videos or showing demos of their new features they built or bugs they fixed. And I mean, I consider this is not efficient. Um, so what are, um, you know, check out testing challenges. As you may have guessed, all this leads to certain difficulties from testing. Uh, you know, effectively testing such a large number of user flows is not an easy task given that we do not have a separate testing team. We also don't want to, uh, you know, to depend on full-fledged end-to-end tests for every single user flow because you know, of various like, reasons, such as uh, 
it's kind of slow. Um, you know, there is instability factor in end-to-end -end tests. And at the end of the day, it's inefficient and not scalable to run end-to-end -end tests or testing manually changes after every commit or pull request. Um, so let me, uh, you know, walk you through the um, evolution of testing in our project. Um, so let's take a look at iteration number one. So initially, uh, we had tests written using the enzyme testing library. So the test would render a connected GraphQL component that is wrapped by an, by an Apollo mock provider. So Apollo mock provider allows us to provide mocks for GraphQL requests. So we have to basically write mocks for all the queries used in our component and its child components. Also, this component may require props to be passed. After we have rendered the component, we will go through the assertions in which we will have some checks. For example, you know, whether a particular component with, you know, with the name X has been rendered or not. So, um, you know, what's wrong with this approach? Can you guess? Um, first, testing components in isolation is not very effective since um, we do not know whether another part of the system with which this component may interact will behave correctly. And second, testing implementation details is kind of evil. So here we kind of check checking our components by name, which is not very good. And um, the test can simply fail if the component's name changes. Um, let me show you some code. Um, so this is a you know, sample um, you know, test. We have you know, our query mock here. Um, it has some variables and some mock data. And then we're gonna render Apollo mock provider. We're gonna pass mocks, in this case, just one mock. And then we're gonna render our you know, component with some props. And down below, we have uh, you know, our assertions where we're gonna find you know, whether uh, you know, some component with this name you know, exists um, and you know, being shown on the UI. Um, and question is, does such a solution solve our problem? Obviously it doesn't. So we have to move on and we moved on. Um, so this is our um, next um, iteration. After thinking over the mistakes, we came to the next iteration. So we replaced the enzyme library with React testing library, which allows, allows us uh, you know, to avoid testing implementation details. Instead of checking components by name, we strictly began to emulate the user you know, behavior uh, to test components in the same way as users would do in the browser. Um, so for example, finding elements by labels or by text or by test IDs. But the problem of testing individual components in isolation is still there. Um, so let me show you um, some code. Um, so pretty much this is the same mock that we had before. This is the same um, you know, um, component and same Apollo mock provider, but now this is the difference. So now we're gonna uh, basically check if um, you know, elements exist based on you know, some text uh, that, uh, in these components. Um, so we're gonna just you know, check if pay waste text is there and then if FI number one and the FI number two are there. And we're gonna click you know, some link with some text. So this is the difference and it, uh, you know, it was a big deal, uh, but um, you know, does such a solution solve our entire problem? Obviously not. So we, you know, we moved on. And this is iteration number three. Um, after thinking over the mistakes, mistakes again, um, we came to the next iteration and we started rendering several logically related components together. Um, on the positive side, it should be noted that this allow us to test the features more fully when all the components involved in a particular feature are rendered together. On the negative side, as you can see from this diagram, the number of mocks has increased significantly because each component can have from one to several queries for each of which you need to write your own mock. Another caveat, we faced with a constant need to think about which components to pick for which feature and look up which queries are used in these components to provide the appropriate mocks. As you would imagine, um, we kind of ended up with a ton of marks we had to deal with and maintain. Um, so let me jump into some code for, um, for this solution. So here we have um, you know, mock for component number one, and then we have you know, another mock for component number two. And then here we have a bunch of other mocks 
you know, we could have like 10, 20 different mocks here. And then we're going to render same Apollo mock provider. We're going to pass all these different mocks for each component. And we're going to render these components together. Um, down below in our assertions, we're going to do the same, basically, you know, test our uh, features, how users would test uh, in the browser. Um, and the question is, does such a solution solve our entire problem? Obviously not, not yet. So we moved on. Um, so we started thinking about how can we improve our approach? So we've got a list of what we wanted to see in the solution. Um, first, we have to start using real GraphQL schema for the mocks. Basically move away from writing mocks for each query to writing mocks for GraphQL field resolvers used in the schema. Second, uh, we wanted to stop thinking about which components to pick for each user flow. Basically, this can be solved by rendering like entire client app without knowing the details of how it's implemented under the hood. And third, the solution should support, you know, running user flows, not only in the browser-like environment, for example, JSDOM, if you're not familiar, uh, it's JSDOM is used by default uh, in Jest, but also in real browsers manually or in automated end-to-end -end tests by reusing our assertions. Also, the solution should make it possible for developers, designers, or product managers to launch user flows without much efforts and not going through long instructions. Speaking of metrics, um, we kind of wanted to reduce the time to build new features uh, and fixing bugs. Um, and the last one, um, that solution should enable mock-driven development mode. And let me explain that a little bit more. Um, so why mock-driven development so important in the development of GraphQL React applications? Let me ask you a few questions. Um, so how often have you had to start writing a feature when the API isn't ready yet? Imagine that the GraphQL scheme is already approved but you cannot start development because you're waiting for the scheme to be implemented on the backend. Or how often do you try to test something and downstreams return temporary errors from stage servers or stage servers are down completely? Or you were given you know, a visual bug to fix. And in order to reproduce the bug, you need to spend a lot of efforts to create you know, all the necessary user accounts, add credit cards, bank accounts, read huge instruction, and in the end, you, you may still not receive needed result because you simply forgot some additional step. So this is why we needed to have mock-driven development support built in. Um, and also, uh, I kind of really want to talk about advantage of using GraphQL schema mocks over writing mocks for individual requests. Um, so problem with mocking individual requests are obvious. It, it involves huge amount of mock code that is difficult to maintain. Instead, when you mock your schema resolvers, you have little to no extra code. Um, all you need to do is to implement default resolvers for a schema and then override the necessary resolvers in test cases. Um, it's important to understand that when you use GraphQL schema mocks, you kind of start thinking not about the queries in your tests, which are kind of like implementation details, but about what data the schema should return for a particular user flow. And here we go. This is the solution and we named it Apollo Case Manager. Uh, it's based on write once, run everywhere approach. It's powered by React testing library and Selenium WebDriver APIs. There is built-in browser integration. All mocks are based on the real GraphQL schema that is used on stage servers or production. And also, it allows development against mock APIs. Um, so um, let's uh, dive in you know, into how this tool works. So Apollo Case Manager is based on use cases which developers need to write. So use case is simply describes how user can interact with an app to accomplish a particular goal. So we can launch each use case manually in the browser through the use case viewer. Uh, it's pretty much a dash, dash, dashboard with a list of all the use cases in the project that can be launched manually by anyone. Something like a storybook, but the main difference is that dashboard is rendered right inside your application, similar to Redux DevTools. 
Um, each use case can also be run as a regular, you know, just as directly from the terminal or CI, which will be using just DOM instead of real browser. This model is pretty much used to run quickly, you know, all use cases after each commit or on CI and pull requests. And also, you know, this case can, use case can be run, um, you know, as an end-to-end -end test that, that will launch a real browser, for example, Chrome or Safari or Firefox, basically any browser that's, that's, that is supported by Selenium WebDriver. Uh, one of the features of the end-to-end -end mode is that you can specify whether to use mocked GraphQL responses defined under use cases or trigger actual network requests. Um, it's pretty powerful. Um, as you may have guessed, use cases code is fully reusable between all these modes without any duplication. Um, so roughly, you know, speaking, if application is broken down into features, then each feature may have its own set of use cases. At this moment, we have many hundreds of different use cases in our checkout project. Um, so let's uh, check out the life cycle of the use case. Um, so when we run a use case first, we have to mock our schema. To do that, we create a default, default mock resolvers of our entire GraphQL schema, which we will be you know, reusing across all, all the use cases, and then override only specific field resolvers in each use case. And next, use cases, uh, they're gonna render entire like React application based on the mocked schema. And then we're just gonna run assertions, if any. Um, so let's take a look at some use cases example. Um, so, uh, imagine you have some, um, you know, you have some feature and you, you need to add a new use case. Um, so the use cases folder is created in which, uh, you know, we export an array of all the use cases, one of which is presented right here. So basically this is an array and this is the use case that we wanna, you know, create for this specific feature. So each use case, it has, um, it kind of consists uh, of a title, you know, with all the um, steps, um, that's going to be uh, needed, you know, to run this use case. So we just have this title, and then next, there is like global's object. It's pretty much like a settings object that you could, um, you know, use, uh, for example, to load um, your content based on the on the country or language. So it's a, it's like a settings object, and then next we have resolvers, um, and so um, this is the place where you can override default. Um, um, you know, resolvers uh, for your default uh, schema. So imagine you have uh, um, your schema and you kind of wrote, you know, resolvers for each individual field. So now you have, you know, default um, result for entire schema. And then you kind of like, okay, for this use case, all I need to do, I want to override just one field. So merchant may have, you know, 10 different fields, but I just want to override just one and set country, you know, be in France. Every other values for all the other fields gonna come from default um, mock um, that we have for our schema. And second, we're gonna override checkout session. Right here, we're gonna override, you know, finding options result resolver. And then we're gonna override credit, you know, offers. We wanna have one credit offer presented to the user. Um, and so down below, we have asserts. So this is the section um, you know, uh, which is uh, powered by, um, you know, React testing um, library API. So, um, so you know, in Assert, we're kind of like making sure like uh, developers can, can only like use uh, Assert methods, which are encouraging like better testing practices. Uh, so we are basically writing this um, Assert as we would usually do for end-to-end -end tests. Um, so it's pretty much, you know, wait for some, um, some test IDs, click around, and then, and then again, select some options and, and stuff like this, right? Um, and so um, you may, you know, you and basically the, the, the thing is these asserts, they basically, we, we're, gonna, we're kind of like reusing these asserts between, um, you know, regular like integration test, uh, which is, uh, uh, which, we, which we're running uh, using uh, JS DOM, and these assets are also, you know, being reused in end-to-end -end tests. We don't need to duplicate, 
you know, our test suite or anything like this. This is just, you write it once and then you can reuse these assets everywhere. And basically, um, you know, you kind of like, you may have a question like, but how do you reuse this, you know, assets, you know, between integration tests and end-to-end -end tests? Um, you know, the API is different, right? In React testing library and Selenium a web driver. And the answer is uh, we implemented wrappers for each React testing library API um, methods in which, you know, DOM queries are executed through Selenium web driver API. Uh, so when you know these assets are being run for end to end tests, uh, you know all these kind of methods of React testing library, it's gonna uh, it's gonna use like uh, Selenium web driver um, uh, logic inside of these uh, wrappers. Um, so when the use case is launched in the form of end to end, um, you, you know the the use case will open a real browser and it, you know it will search uh, DOM elements uh, through WebDriver API instead of the standard DOM API that is available in React testing library. Um, and there is another example. We have, you know, again, feature, and we wanna write some, again, new use case. We kind of define the title, step one, step two, step three. And then um, in this case, this is, like, this is like an add card use case. We have to like click add card link. We have to fill out add card form click save and you know check um, some server side validation errors. Um, so we're gonna say, okay, this is you know some German user. And then we're gonna say, okay, this is default create uh, funding options we have. And this is the cool part. We can define and um, you know um, resolvers for mutations. So in this case, our mutation name is add card. Uh, and what we have to do, we have to throw um, you know, some validation error um, so we basically we create some new error. We we put some something in the data. In this case, you know, card CVV error code, and then we just throw this error for this uh, in this resolver of this mutation. And then down below in the asserts, um, we're just gonna check if error message showed up in the UI. Um, so let me uh, you know give you some you know demo here. Um, so let's take a look. Um, open. Um, yeah. So this is uh, so this is our app. This is checkout, right? Um, but the only difference is um, right now it's not talking to the network. Um, it's based on the uh, mocked GraphQL schema. So on the right side, you have we have this dashboard. Uh, so, so we have all these, you know, use cases available in our system and our project. So as you can see, we have, you know, list of different features on the left and, um, you know, list of use cases for each feature on the right. So you see we have add card, add band, credit offer, installments, rewards, you know, ship to, and there are like hundreds of different features. Um, and so we can we we could basically say okay let's let's check split balance click split balance and you know there are some use cases for split balance as well so if I click you know split balance use case it's going to like render um, split balance so it kind of like refreshes um, the app and it um, provides um, the mocked data um, for for this split balance use case so pretty much this is how you know. Um, managers um, or like designers or product managers or even devs uh, are um, you know verifying the features uh, manually so you have you know right in front of you the dashboard you can select any feature uh, and just play around with it and just see how this you know ui is going to look like when you select some specific use case um, so in this case let's see add card right so we have add card we have a like a description um, you know, what, what we have to do, you know, in this use case. In that case, we're gonna, you know, load checkout, you know, click add card link, enter submit card information, and then, you know, um, verify that funding you know, instruments got updated with a new FI. Um, so, so what we can do, we can, you know, click, you know, click the button. Um, then we can, we can just fill that information right here. Um, and it's it's not it's not talking to, uh, to to the server at all. It's just basically based on mocks. So if I click continue, 
it's it's also basically making uh, uh, mutations which are not talking to the server to the you know to the network. It's all based on um, um, on the on the mocks. And so the same you know with split balance or with any feature, we can just play around with it um, and um, you know. We don't need to think about instructions. We don't need to authenticate users. We don't need to create users. Um, it's uh, it's basically way easier for anybody to run any use case, um, you know, and uh, make sure it's working, UI working, and your experiment, for example, working. We could also, um, you know, force some locale. So let's say we, you know, we want to test this use case. How it's going to look in Chinese? So we're going to select Chinese, and now you know our use case kind of loaded. Um, uh, with a Chinese, uh, you know, locale with the language, um, and we can verify, you know, oh, you know, some some text is is not working or something like this. Um, so okay, so this is how you can run use case um, in the browser, and this is basically mock mod. This is for us. This is mock driven development. So when we write new features or we are fixing bugs, we we basically we launch this mode and we we select use case. We fix the box or create new feature, and we are done. Um, and uh, you know, also we could we could run this use case um, as a, as an end to end test, right? So we're gonna uh, we're gonna just uh, say you know yarn test. We're gonna select our test, um, and what's going to happen? It's going to open um, Firefox, and it's going to you know go through all the steps. Pretty much automatically. Yep. So so basically, this is um, this is how it works, right? So we, it's the same use case is being reused uh, in different environments, and also we can we could we could run this use case as a regular just test. Uh, which uses JS DOM instead of the browser. So um, that, that's that's how we regularly, you know, run our use cases, you know, on CI or, or after each commit. Um, so let's let me switch back um, to my presentation. Okay. Um, so what are the conclusions we can we can draw here? As you can see, this solution goes outside of just you know being like a testing solution kind of improves many important metrics. Uh, in practice, we have noticed that time to write new features or fix bugs reduced significantly. Uh, developers no longer you know, depend on working backends, user authentication, internet connection, you know, endless instructions how to reproduce checkout flows and so on. Um, we kind of also notice an increased confidence change in code. You know, Apollo Case Manager allowed, uh, allowed us to refactor code with confidence, making sure that we're not breaking anything um, and um, you know, wasting time updating the tests since use cases kind of like free from testing implementation details. Uh, it also allows us, you know, to work, you know, on a project in complete isolation from backends through a mock driven development mode. Um, also, use cases they kind of serves us as a documentation. Um, use cases explain what's the expected behavior. Um, so usually tests in comparison to uh, you know any written documentation are always up to date, um, and that's great. Um, developers do not need to create um, uh, you know videos or screenshots anymore to show how most checkout flows are working. They can just you know any anyone product or designer or anyone can just open you know uh, mocked mode in the browser um, and just you know. Click some use case from the dashboard and see how UI you know behaves, how user flow works, without even you know asking developer to sh you know to uh, for long instructions and stuff like this. Um, so the pretty much killer feature turned out to be the ability to launch use cases from the browser to be used by you know the developers, designers, or product managers, and and this saves a huge amount of time uh, for everyone. Uh, question, um, you know, is it open sourced? Um, now it's not yet, uh, but it's under uh, consideration. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, thank you very much. Uh, I hope um, you had a you know wonderful time at this uh, virtual conference. Um, stay healthy and uh, stay happy. And yeah, um, check out this card and, and and thanks you you know once again for listening. 
Thank you so much. We are so excited to have had you, and that was a really amazing talk. And congratulations on your first public talk. Yay. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're basically going to see you everywhere because you just can't get off that high now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty pumped right now. Uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing to talk. Amazing. Oh, we're so excited about that. So if you have any questions for Sergey, feel free to post it in the YouTube comments below. Um, again, everybody, thank you so much for having us. I'm gonna go ahead and remove you, Sergey, from the chat. Um, and you know, thank you so much, Shruti, for being our amazing MC. I couldn't have asked for anything better today. Thank you for having me. I had so much fun. Also, this is the first time I am being an MC. So yeah, so many firsts. Oh my God. And next time keynote, if anybody is looking for an amazing keynote on GraphQL, feel free to hit up Shruti because she's just so amazing and she'll get everybody pumped up with dev jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, um, don't forget that PayPal and Braintree are hiring. I think Mark said there's something like 88 open positions and you can go to PayPal and look at the jobs section and um, search GraphQL as a topic, and then you'll see all the different jobs. It's really wonderful as well because there's so many different remote opportunities now, um, which is amazing because that wasn't uh, the case before. Um, and you know, if you care about PayPal or Braintree or wonder how they work, um, you know, you can definitely hit up Shruti or Mark or any of the, any of some of the other amazing speakers that you saw here. Uh, speak today. Uh, as well, I just wanted to thank, uh, you know, this.labs, which is my company for supporting and, you know, allowing me to do all the things I want to do, which is really exciting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and my amazing team. And, um, you know, if you care about exciting things like this, feel free to visit us at graphql-meetup.com and you'll see monthly meetups. Eve does a lot of um, live, basically, training every month, and we also have amazing talks, too. So other than that, we will see you next time. Thank you so much, Shruti. Bye. Thank Stay you. healthy. Bye.